impressive. Wind becoming a little bit of a factor. Another kick hangs up. Now Larry Taylor trying to get outside. And Brandon Stewart won't let him turn the corner once again after a 29-yard punt. John Cornish at 178. So closing in on a personal best, and he only needed 251 yards the rest of the season starting this game to eclipse last year's record-setting performance for a Canadian running back in the CFL. Bombers have moved Koshi Moama back to safety and Javon Johnson back to the short side corner. Here's Cornish, breaks a tackle, and away he goes. John Cornish inside the 45-yard line. <laughs> He's excited, and he knows, that he knows the yards are starting to pile up. 31 puts him over 200, and that's a personal best for John Cornish. Yes, sir, and he knows that Corey Sheets is watching, too. And this is, again, blocking up front. He's in the second level all night before he even gets touched. I mean, he's coming through that line. Very little resistance, a little bit of a move from Brian Turner, and now he just shoots the gap. No Kenok Mawama, he's blocked up. No Pierre-Luc LeBay, and he's up there with the safety, Koshi Mawama. And Walter comes in to spell Cornish, and Kevin Glenn looks for Maurice Price, and it's broken up. Good defensive play there by Johnny Sears. So Cornish at 208, and we were checking the list. Sean Millington at 225 was the 10th best rushing performance. So Cornish getting close to top 10 all time for one game in the CFL. Not to mention extending his lead on Corey Sheets for the rushing title. And Sheets has led all season long until tonight. He's got over a 100-yard lead now as Rice gets the hitch and he gets wrestled down by Javon Johnson. You can imagine that John Cornish will be a double nominee for this team when it comes time for player awards. Outstanding player and outstanding Canadian, I'm sure, will be the nominees for John Cornish. And with Sheets returning... Uh, Likely Western showdown between those two for those honors. Well, this is night done. You sit him down with 12 minutes to go in a in a game that looks like you're in control of. Here's Paradez trying to extend the lead. From 46 yards out. Boy, he's been money all year, hasn't he? Pretty impressive. He's hit from 52, and he is 11 for 11 outside of 40. John Cornish setting up another Paradez field goal with a 31-yard run. Paradez a 46-yard field goal, checking the record books. John Cornish at 208 is 30 shy of the Stampeder record. That is co-held. Willie Burton did it in 75 against the Calgary Stampeders. LaBelle Coleman back in 1964, both with 238 yards in a game. Well, I just wonder if his night is done. I mean, he's got the warm-up coat on now, and it would actually be probably a pretty good move for John Opnagel to rest him now, even though we'd like to see if he can get close to that Stampeder record or maybe even move into the top 10 in the CFL book, but... I we see Matt Walter. It hasn't been a night where he's taken a lot of physical hey, abuse. Though. Quay, Quay, we got you and Moe, man. No, but it just takes, you know, one twist right. of the no, knee or exactly. one twist of the ankle. And and you could tell that Matt Walter's getting ready to come in. And Cornish has got the warm-up jacket on. Corey Sheets is going, okay. A little shovel inside. Will Ford once again. Up to the 40, five yards for Ford. Sheets is going, Corey Sheets is going, okay, keep that warm-up jacket on. I want to stay within striking range for the rushing title. Corey Sheets talked about that coming out of the season, that that was a goal for him to win the rushing derby. So 
He gets nicked, gets hurt, looked good in Vancouver last night, and is back. However, John Cornish over 200 tonight. Know the boot, and Taylor will feel it on a hop. And the cover team's done a good job for the Bombers. And we may see Drew Tate come in at quarterback. Four minutes into the fourth quarter, number four looks ready to go. Stampeders, one and one through the first two games, has not thrown a pass since July 5th. Been on the field in short yardage, but hasn't thrown a pass as he tests out. See how far that elbow has come. Matt Walter in behind. Tate is the running back. Looks like John Cornish's night might be done. And here's the Calvary Dino product. Matt Walter taking the handoff and straight ahead. Deja Dunn, the tackle up at the 43. I mentioned the completion percentage best in club history at 69.7. Kevin Glenn was at 74%, over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. His night's done. First 300-yard game for Calgary, as explosive a team as they have been en route to their 11th victory, just their third 300-yard passing game of the season. Walter again. And he is stopped up short. Alex Super steps up, and we don't get a good gauge on Drew Tate's throwing arm on that series. It's been an interesting discussion this week, and actually Coach Huffnagle was... Uh, just a little bit prickly when it came to answering the questions about his quarterbacks. His hierarchy has always been Drew Tate first, Kevin Glenn at the number two spot as we talked about in the first half, and then Bo Levi Mitchell, but some have wondered and, and asked if, if that's changed and if it will be changed permanently as, as they go forward here in the regular season, but I'm not sure that Drew Tate is completely 100% yet. When it's your throwing arm, you got to be careful with that. Sears back to field this punt. And he'll get driven out after a short return. So John Cornish might be done, but we expect to see Will Ford in the bomber offensive huddle. What a big night in Calgary for him when we come back. Well, our congratulations to the latest inductees into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, some with Calgary Stampeder roots, and uh, tip of the cap to the folks in Edmonton who staged such a great event this week. Yeah, apparently well over a 1,000 for the ceremonial dinner, Dinner, and there's Miles Garrell, who played here in Calgary. Dan Ferrone played briefly in Calgary, mostly at Toronto, Argonaut, and Don Mooney are the Stampeders. Brian Fryer, the University of Alberta star. There was pressure on the quarterback from DeMonte Bolden, and an incompletion. I, I was a teammate of Dan Ferrone with the Simon Fraser Klansman. He was a senior, I was a rookie. Earl Winfield was the guy I played against. And as good a receiver as Earl Winfield was, when it comes to that, all, that production, you see over 14,000 yards, he's tough too. A guy that would go and hit you. In fact, in the 89 year that we met the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Grey Cup, they played Earl Winfield at safety at times that year. That's how he great he, return man as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Just a real tough all-around football player. Tall is shaking up a little bit on that last hit from Devontae Bolden, a drop from Denmark. It's a two and out. And who's manning the command center with Jake Ireland yeah. celebrating this weekend? Well, Jake, you know, 555 games. And he now does about, I just had a conversation with Tom Higgins about it. He now does about 80% of the games in the command center where he's in charge there. Congratulations to all the inductees. <laughs> no, good boot. That drives Taylor back about 15 yards. And again, the cover team in a hurry downfield. James Green chocks up another. He's among the leaders. And we've noticed him a few times today. Get down in a hurry. There's one Jen Glenn January's guys. You know, on the cover teams, too. Same barber, too. 
49 yard punt by Renault. A good I, one. I'm not sure when I look at some of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they have a barber. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might not need one, that guy. <laughs> well, let's see if Drew Tate throws the football in the second series. Again, Matt Walter is the running back, and, and it will be Tate to throw. And, that one threw it away. Threw it away. Yep. Well covered on the play was Jabari Arthur. Alex Suber was in his hip pocket. You know, a couple of times, in fact, I believe it was last week's game for Calgary, Drew Tate came in and, and scored on a short yardage touchdown run. And he tossed the ball about 60 yards up into the stands. And I think since then, everybody has been saying, like, his arm's good to go. But it, I think it's the type of injury more so that you want to see how it reacts when he really starts working it. I'm talking, you know, 30, 40 passes in a game. I'm not sure they've been able to test that yet. Drops it off underneath. Sinopoli, super there, and Sinopoli will get drilled at the 37. So a two and out once again for Tate and the Stamps. It sets up an interesting scenario down the road. If they are all healthy, has, jo has Drew Tate lost his starting job once they are all healthy completely to Kevin Glenn and the way he's played? <laughs> Neighbor with a good boot. Javon Johnson. Turn up to the 28 yard line. <laughs> TSN, the home of NFL Sunday Night Football, our week five matchup sees Matt Schaub and the Houston Texans in San Francisco to take on Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. Live coverage gets underway 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TSN. Chicago Bears got to get back on track, 3 and 1. And they have the Giants this week, I believe, so. Have a chance there, I think. Giants <laughs> hungry for a win. Yeah. <laughs> Max Hall out right there to Clarence Denmark. Trying to turn it upfield. Good effort by Denmark to get close to a first down. A year ago, it was a tough day at the office here for the Bombers, and the bags are out again. 44 to 3 was the score of the last visit to McMahon. The most loyal fan bases in the league, but not enough to cheer about this season. And the Calgary fan behind them is happy to hand the tissues forward. <laughs> Second down carry well, by there, Will Ford. There is work to do, but this is a unique offseason. And with, with Ottawa coming in, and we'll see what they do from the top down. Wade Miller is, is in term president and and taking a look at, at this from the press box here and and yes there's lots of work to do but it's an interesting offseason with Ottawa and with the expansion draft and the movement of players and a chance for this team to go out and find a franchise quarterback to go and try and sign one of the free agents will have to be their top priority that doesn't mean that Max Hall is thrown in the scrap heap he can come back and compete I'm sure but the bottom line being they got to find a young guy there they're Mike Riley of 2013 and then build in some blocks around him get Chris Matthews healthy and back and signed he Mwamba sitting on the bench there on defense got to get signed their front seven pretty good but a couple of Canadian offensive linemen possibly through trade through the draft it's got to be big time emphasis for this team now is to Start drafting some Canadian O-linemen coming out of the CIS and start building that Canadian content up front. Max Hall battling here for an invitation back to camp next year, you would think. Cordero Law shaking up on the last play, doesn't look serious, and that pass incomplete intended for Wallace Miles. So second and 10 for the Bombers. Well, and, and, you know, from the top down, what is this team going to do? And, and I'm talking about for football ops and, and coach. 
You know, and, and we've mentioned this before that Tim Burke, great resume as a coordinator. And let's say it like it is, a struggle as a head coach. Now, does he have the horses? No. Quick hitter, did mark the catch, but he'll be dropped short of the first down, and Darius Brooks makes another tackle. But I, I will say this, uh, you know, a first-class guy, a good football man, it, it, Tim Burke, you know, players always say that they want to hear from their head coach the truth. They want their head coach to be up front and tell them how it is. And he has certainly done that this year with both his players and the media. At times, he's been criticized for it. You know, calling out a player when he makes a bad mistake. I think that's been refreshing. Uh, he's a first-class guy who won't be out of work long if, in fact, they don't go forward with him as the head coach in Winnipeg next year. Down a fake was on, but the flags are flying. And somebody moved pre-snap. Procedure, Winnipeg, the right side of the line. Five-yard penalty remains third down. So it was more than one, and I think Bomber fans at least like to see the fact that they were going to try something like this. But, yep, pretty clear. The right side of the line moved early. It was unanimous. <laughs> Dickinson versus Dickinson. And the offensive brother is going to have bragging rights tonight. <laughs> bouncing down and out to bounds at both the 38. We seen Kevin Glenn we're looking at Drew Tate and we asked John Huffnagel about his quarterbacking issues Kevin Glenn uh, uh, right now has been our starting quarterback Drew hasn't played a lot of football and uh, as the season progresses uh, I'm sure there'll be opportunities for Drew to get back on the field and, uh, and get him the confidence that uh, maybe I do have to make a decision so we'll be watching that closely. And I'm sure he's watching to see how Drew is, first of all, just throwing the ball. And meanwhile, there's a pretty good chunk of the fan base that like the other guy, too. What a nice problem to have. Well, I, I think it's beyond light, Chris. I, I think they, the, the fan base is in big time goal lead by Mitchell's corner. I mean, I, I think that they, they're they real excited about seeing more of number 19 out there. And and I don't know how Dave Dickinson and John Hoffnagel can take Kevin Glenn off the field. I mean, he's done everything that they needed him to do, put him in a position to to lock up first place in the West. As this, There's still work to be done. I'm not giving them first place just yet, but they're the front runners. Tate underneath, and away goes West. Will gallop down into Bomber territory, get pushed out at the 38-yard line. <laughs> 24-yard pickup on that crosser to Joe West. No hesitation on the throw. That wasn't a long throw. That was just over the middle, but so far the throwing motion looks the same. As far as I can remember with Drew Tate, it's like he's seeing the game, hit the right player on that crossing route. West joins McDaniel as a 100-yard-plus receiver for the Stamps today, and Matt Walters got some room on the right side and left his feet and gets taken down around the 31-yard line. You know, and, and keep in mind, as the Stamps close in on 600 yards of net offense here in this game, that it wasn't that long ago, I mean, even at the end of last year, that this this entire fan base was real excited about Drew Tate. Real excited about him. Well, we've had countless controversies about one quarterback or another with a team, but this might be the timeout. The first time you have three options that could all win at the highest level 
at the same time. I mean, there's there's been teams with three quarterbacks that have gone on to all have great careers. Yeah. Calgary's had a few of those, but all three at the same time, and, and it may not matter which one goes out. And Calgary called the timeout, and now we're being told that uh, the officials are also giving the three-minute warning. So we'll step out and be right back. 240 left. Here's what comes up next week. Huge game here at McMahon. The Lions licking their wounds after last night's loss. Eskimos in Saskatchewan. And we mentioned this is the last East-West game of the year. All East or all West now from here on in. Thanksgiving weekend coming up. Direct snap at Walter. And a cut back to the 28 yard line which is really the way you want it i know there's always there's often you know discussions about the schedule and back-to-back -back games and there's criticisms at times but i you know you want it divisional games down the stretch and you that fight for playoff home playoff field position in the playoffs and certainly that buy in first place Got a measurement here as Walter close to the first down. We'll find out if he got it. It'll be a four point lead for Calgary in the division, but then you see the game against Saskatchewan, two games against BC, and you know nothing's settled yet. No, they, they are in the driver's seat, obviously, with the lead they have now and the fact that down the stretch, if Calgary goes 500, they should be able to lock it up in their last four.